Hey guys, Akil Mohadeen here, and welcome back to another video. Today I'm going to be comparing SD card technology and USB. Now at first glance, they might seem pretty similar. I mean, they both store data, and they can both transfer data at pretty fast speeds. In fact, SD card might seem a little bit better because their card slot is much thinner than a USB port, which is better for ever-increasingly thinner laptops. So this just begs the question, why is everyone so hung up on USB? To answer this question, let's first go over some similarities. One, they both use non-volatile memory, which means that even if power is lost, they still retain all of their data. This is why you can save a Word doc on your flash drive, keep it unplugged for years without anything happening. This is different from volatile memory, which you might have guessed, which is typically found in RAM, which loses all of its data after power is lost. If you want to learn how to make this kind of memory, you can watch this video from my 8-bit CPU project series. Next, they both come in large capacities, but you already know that. Speeds is where things get interesting. USB 3.0 can theoretically transfer files at up to 5 gigabytes per second or 640 megabytes per second. Not megabits, megabytes. SD cards, on the other hand, are really weird. Just like USB, SD cards have gone through iterations where speed has increased and so has capacity. Unlike USB though, SD cards do not have a frontwards compatibility, but we'll talk about this later. So SD cards have been iterated like the following. First, there is SDSC, standard capacity. After that, there was SDHC, high capacity, which introduced in 2006 had a maximum file transfer rate of 25 megabytes per second and a max capacity of 32 gigabytes. In 2009, SD was upgraded again, but this time to SDXC, where the XC stands for extra capacity. This one had a max capacity, theoretically, of 2 terabytes, and it also used XFAT as file system, whereas in the past, it was using FAT32. For speeds, things just got plain confusing from here on out. UHS Ultra High Speed 1.0 was released for SDXC and SDHC, which updated the max transfer rate to 104 megabytes per second. Then, in 2011, UHS 2.0 arrived for speeds up to 312 megabytes per second. Along with this, there are also speed classes, which represent minimum speed transfer rates. So class 2 means 2 megabytes. Class 4 means 4, class 6 means 6, 10 means 10. By the way, you can figure out which one you have by looking at the markings on the SD card you have. But back to the frontwards compatibility thing. An SD card is not forwards compatible, but it is backwards compatible. This means that your SDXC card will not work in an SDHC slot, but an SDHC card will work in an SDXC slot. In other words, it's okay to pair a new camera with an old card, but not the other way around. There are a ton of different types of SD, and I didn't even mention the micro or mini versions of these cards. However, I don't think it's necessary because it's becoming more and more apparent why USB became more universal than SD. USBs are more universal because they are universal. They plug into any connector, no need to worry about version or size or file system. Another reason is that not only does a top of the line SD card max out at 90 megabytes per second, whereas a USB max out at 5 gigabytes per second, SD is so complicated there's almost no way for the average consumer to keep track of anything anyways. Now it sounds like I just hate SD because I'm ripping on them so much, but that's just not true. SD did some great things. Before SD, certain cameras would only work with certain interfaces, which was beyond confusing. So if you were ever buying a camera in, say, the 2000s, you'd have to sort out whether you wanted compact flash, memory stick, smart media, etc. And only one of those would work with your camera. So SD kind of took over because people began to recognize its ability to hold large amounts of data in such a small form factor. See, USB is just an interface where you can make a flash drive behind the USB port as big as you want to. Whereas SD has the difficult job of trying to cram as many transistors as possible into this tiny 32 by 24 millimeter super thin rectangle. So to summarize, is SD confusing? Yes, but it's definitely simplified the process a whole lot for the average consumer. But USB is still faster and simpler. Please like this video if you liked it and subscribe to see more like this. My name is Akil Bohudin and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.